A lot of work has recently been done to the Threadco AppLink connection plugin for Blender, and it also streamlines the process quite a bit. So we're going to conduct an update to our previous video for exporting to per pixel painting. I'm going to select my object and click send. Once that's no longer highlighted, I can go to 3D Coat, and I should see an import dialog. If you see something like this, where it's trying to add a UV map for every single part, you may want to uncheck that if you already have UVs assigned to it. If you do not have any UVs, but you want to apply some, for example, let 3D Coat apply auto UV mapping, at least initially, you can choose that option here. But in this case, since we already have UVs, I'm going to choose to keep it. I'll also check the Blender normal map preset as well. You can change the size of your UV maps. In this case, I'll just leave it at 2K for each one and hit OK. All right, now this first layer, I'm going to double click and name that Metal. And I'll add another layer. Double click, name that paint, another one, double click, name it lens, and now go back down to this metal layer, I'm going to go to a metals smart material folder. Your list of smart material subfolders will look different because I've added quite a bit of third party packs as well as some of the 3D coat scan store materials. And uh, I'll go with that one. Now, what it's going to try to do initially is create a curvature map. As you can see, it's going through the baking process. When it's done with that, many of these materials will also require an ambient inclusion map, which this one should as well. Okay, and that's what it's asking me here. I hit OK, OK. Now, if you're brand new to 3D Coats, I just want to quickly touch on navigating. You can use your cursor outside the object and just left mouse click and drag to rotate. Middle mouse click and drag in order to pan. Then you can right click outside the object to zoom. So right click and drag. Let's go ahead now and we're going to apply our material, but first we're going to use our smart material preview. I can quickly Scale it. This little yellow dot indicates that I can use a gizmo if I want. That way I don't have to continue reaching up here. It's right over the model itself. Left mouse click and drag. You can scale globally. You can rotate here. You can click this little icon and drag to reposition just a gizmo. And you can close it by clicking the X or right clicking the dot. Again, I'll go ahead and move that a little bit. And I think I'm satisfied with that. I can fill the entire model here on one layer by right clicking and choosing fill entire layer. Additionally, if I select the fill tool, I could do the very same by clicking layer. Now I'm going to select paints metal and I'll select that one. I'll select the paint layer. can preview it. If I need to make adjustments, I can right click on the thumbnail and choose Smart Material Editor. I can see the preview. So let's go ahead and do that. Say OK. Save. It's not committed yet. I'm just saying a preview. So to commit it, what I want to do in this instance, I don't want to fill the entire layer. I want to fill just parts of the model. So to do that, all I have to do is click on those parts and just click.
Okay, so let's say we want to give that a try. I'm first going to attach this material. I can right click and choose attach to the current layer. Another option is if I have clicked on other materials to sample it, I can look in my material history panel and I can switch to those. So let's go to the Windows menu under pop-ups. If you don't see the material history panel in your UI, you can access it here and then dock it wherever you like. Each time you come back to 3D Coat, it will remain docked where you placed it. I can also right click on this thumbnail and choose to attach to the current layer. So either way, on the smart material itself or in the material history. So let's go ahead and choose attach to current layer. It's going to allow me to sample other materials very quickly and I can apply these other materials to the same area. You'll see as I select another material like this one, only the pixels that were applied previously will be filled with this new material. That's a big time saver. And I will sample a few others. Okay, let's sample that one. And let's try that one as well. Okay. This one tan color and that'll be it. I take that back. I want to add one more. This one where it doesn't have quite the amount of wear on it. Okay, I like that. So now we are ready to take this back into Blender. In the previous video, I showed where you would choose Export to Blender. And what that would do is it would add a new instance of the mesh. So we would have to hide this one and so on. But there is an option for open an original app. We were having some trouble with this previously. So that's one reason why I didn't show this option. I was waiting for that to get fixed. But now it is. And this is the best option to choose when you are returning from Blender. I have assigned a hotkey to this to make it a little more of a streamlined process. So each time I'm ready to go back to Blender, I just hit my hotkey. You can do that by hovering over the option and hitting the end key on the keyboard and then make the assignment. So I will hit that hotkey. The first thing I want to do is choose the export preset, Blender app link. By default, export geometry will be checked, but in this instance, we only need to update our textures. If we were in the tweak room and we had applied some modeling edits to our model, then we would want to check export geometry. But since we didn't make any changes to the mesh, we don't need to export this again. So I'm going to uncheck that. And I will check to make sure that I'm exporting the low poly mesh. If we choose mid poly mesh, 3D coat is going to apply subdivision as it exports. I'm going to choose the one that I have created previously, Blender App Link No Displacement. I don't have to mess with the scale. I'll just go ahead and click OK. Now in Blender, this is automatically going to update for us. In the upper right hand corner, I'm going to choose the look development or the EV icon. And we can see that it updates for us. This is great. You can see just how closely these are matched. And all of our materials are already set up for us. Okay, so now let's say in 3D Coat we want to go back and sample some other materials. Let's choose the red. Okay, I'll hit my hotkey for the app link and hit OK because it's going to remember all the choices that we made previously. Okay, and it updates automatically. 
So this is very close to having a live link between the two. It's as automated as it can possibly be. Let's choose another. Let's go with this weathered stormtrooper look. And we'll see how fast we can go. Hit our hotkey and then hit OK. This model is a little more complex in terms of the number of parts and UV maps. The baking time will be much faster if you have a more simplified model. So that's going to conclude this update on the export options in 3D Coat. In the next video, we're going to take a look at exporting to micro vertex painting. So stay tuned and thank you for watching.